Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, August 14th, 2022. This is Deacon Barry Taylor, and we are still in Unit 3 of the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly, which is entitled, The Great Hope of the Saints. The Great Hope of the Saints. And hope does not mean something wishy-washy. It means a confident expectation. So we could actually retitle this, The Great Confident Expectation of the Saints. We're in Lesson 11. Our lesson title from the quarterly is No Place Like It. No Place Like It. Our devotional reading comes from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 to 13. Background scripture comes from Revelation 21, 10 to 27. And our printed or lesson passage comes from Revelation 21, verses 10 to 21. Our key verse is verse 14, Revelation 21, 14. And from the King James Version, it reads, the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Our lesson aims, or number one, explore the possibility of living in a new place, even in another dimension of life. Number two, imagine the richness and serenity of living in the new Jerusalem. Number three, celebrate God's provision of a new city for believers throughout eternity. Our lesson has three divisions. The first division is entitled, A Place of Eternal Beauty. And that's covered between Revelation 21, verses 10 to 14. The second is... Plenty of plenty good room. Plenty good room. That's covered between verses 15 and 17. And the third division is incomparable beauty. It's covered between verses 18 and 21. From the standard commentary, our lesson title is A New City. A New City. And additional aims are number one, summarize the importance of of vivid imagery in John's account of the New Jerusalem. Number two, explain the danger of misinterpreting that imagery. And number three, describe one way this passage should influence his or her behavior. So let's go before the throne and uh, we will give a little background and, and then get continue with our verse by verse. Father, we do thank you uh, and we praise you, Lord, each and every day for your abundance, for your abundant blessings, for your many seen and unseen blessings, Lord. We thank you for another opportunity to study your precious word. And Lord, we we thank you, Lord, for the, the imagery that you gives, give us, Lord, of of the beauty and the glory that uh, that lies ahead for us, Lord, uh, as we uh, will spend eternity in your glorious presence, Lord. We thank you that uh, you've given uh, John, the Apostle John, uh, such um, understanding as he as he had, and, and and means of describing what is the indescribable beauty and glory, Lord, that we will experience. Uh, Lord, we help. We pray that uh, this lesson will help us, Lord, to live more faithfully before you, uh, under the sun, Lord, in this uh, time and in this this age. Uh, and we just uh, thank you for our precious Lord Jesus, that precious blood that He shed, Lord, that we might have a right to spend this glorious eternity with you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Okay, our, our lesson uh, today picks up where our lesson last week left off. Uh, we, if you remember last week, uh, we were, um, <clears throat> the lesson title was No More Tears. 
Uh, we were told about the city, the new Jerusalem. The, 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 first of all, we were told about the new heaven and the new earth that had been created because the old had faded away, had uh, uh, fled. Uh, we, we understood uh, at the beginning of that lesson that uh, all uh, sinners along with Satan uh, had been cast into the lake of fire. All the enemies of God had been destroyed. Uh, those who uh, were doomed uh, for eternity, uh, separated from God, had gone before the great white throne judgment, and God had created all things new, the Alpha and the Omega. He brought, and he was uh, bringing down this new Jerusalem, which was going to sit on a mountain. And as we mentioned, uh, Final, as we finalized that lesson text last week with verse 9 of chapter 21, there was an angel that uh, told John that come and see uh, this new Jerusalem. And as we mentioned last week, uh, there was further description of Jerusalem uh, in the remaining verses of chapter 1. And that is what we're going to be studying a portion of the remaining verses of chapter one. And, uh, you know, uh, we we read the lesson names uh, in both commentary. Uh, I, I As I thought about um, this lesson, I, I couldn't help but but ask myself, what, do, what does it mean? Uh, God is uh, giving us this description of this undescribable, really undescribable, beauty and glory uh, that uh, we will experience in this new Jerusalem. Uh, and um, and, and I, I, I had to, first of all, uh, come to the realization that, or at least my, my belief is that God is trying to convince us that this city is real. I mean, he gives us uh, such details uh, as uh, for us to only conclude that that it's real uh, and and the glory uh, that emanates from this city uh, and the city construction the materials and so forth that the city the city is constructed with are really uh, beyond uh, John's ability to describe uh, I think in its splendor so he uses the language that he has to describe this but I believe that he uh, uh, he does not fulfill uh, exactly uh, the precise descriptions because, as I said, this beauty and this glory and this splendor is indescribable. And I think the, 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 the purpose now is to not only convince us that the city is real, but to motivate us to live more faithful lives before God, uh, lives that are befitting uh, this glorious uh, place where we will spend our eternal future. So that being said, um, the as we said a minute ago, the uh, quarterly has three divisions. Uh, the first division is a place of eternal beauty. We're going to read the passage, and I'm going to read it from the NIV, and then we'll have some discussion. So beginning at verse 10, this is... Uh, this passage covers uh, verses 10 to 14. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. Verse 12, it had a great wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of of the land. So let's back up to uh, verse 10 and look at 10a very quickly. And 
it says, And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. This is the angel uh, that is uh, escorting, or if you will, uh, leading uh, John in this vision. He said, In the spirit, uh, which means it, it, he wasn't actually seeing these things, but he was seeing them in a vision. This is, this is not to say that they were not real, uh, that they were not things to come. If you remember, last week we said that uh, Revelation had three major divisions. Uh, the first was what had happened, what uh, the Lord Jesus had seen. Uh, the second, and that was chapter one. The second was uh, what was occurring then at the time that was covered between uh, chapters two and four. And then the third division was what was uh, the things that were to come. The Lord Jesus said that he was going to show him the things that were to come. So we're in that second phase or that, that third rather, third division, the things that are to come. And so the angel is is now going to take uh, uh, John on a guided tour through a vision to show him the things that are to come. Now, again, uh, he said that the spirit carried, the, the angel rather, carried him in the spirit to a great and high mountain. We don't know which mountain, but it is a great and high mountain. It has to be a great mountain given the dimensions of the city which we will read about shortly part b of uh, verse 10 says and showed me that great city the holy jerusalem descending from heaven from god descending out of heaven rather from god now again we said last week the city pre-existed the city was coming from god out of heaven to the new earth and it was going to sit on this great and high mountain. And uh, uh, if you remember from John 14, did the Lord Jesus said he goes to prepare a place for us. And if he goes, uh, he will come again and receive us unto himself. So this city had, be, had been prepared already for the Lord's saints, the sanctified from all ages. Uh, let's go on to verse 11 and it says having uh, the glory of God uh, let me back up here from the NIV it says it shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel like a jasper clear as crystal now this is an overview uh, the angel is showing John the city descending from heaven, from God. Uh, and the city from a distance, if you will, is brilliant. It, shine, it is shining with the glory of God. The glory of God is emanating from within the city out. We're later going to find out what the wall, that the walls are constructed of uh, this jasper. And this uh, jewel, if you will, described jasper, uh, is actually an opaque uh, jewel. It, it's an opaque jewel, but since John uh, says that it's clear as crystal, this jasper stone, if you will, since he's saying it's clear as crystal, uh, most commentators uh, believe that he is describing a diamond, actually a pure, clear diamond from which uh, this brilliance of God is is emanating or being uh, transferring through. Verse 12, it had a great high wall with 12 gates. This wall encircled the city with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. One, uh, I'm sorry, on the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, uh, you might ask uh, why the city needs walls. Okay, the walls were not for protection. All the enemies of God had been destroyed, but the walls were symbolic of security, of a, a place that was secure. 
furthermore, the angels, there were three angels at each of the gates. Uh, they were uh, there symbolizing the security of the city. You know that angels were very powerful beings. Uh, you know of the account in the Old Testament where one angel killed over 180,000 soldiers. Uh, so uh, they were symbolic of the security that the city would offer or that there would be in the city. And there were names uh, on the gates. The names were uh, the 12 tribes of Israel or the sons of Israel or Jacob. They were inscribed on these gates. We're going to get further description of these gates later. And they symbolized or represented the Old Testament saints. Okay, those uh, names of the 12 tribes of Jacob or Israel represented the Old Testament saints. Verse 13, there were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. Uh, there's perfect symmetry around this, uh, what we're going to learn to be uh, a cube a city. Uh, three gates again. Uh, you could say, well, you know, most ancient cities are at one gate uh, for entry and uh, for exiting, but these gates are to allow free uh, entrance to the city. And rather, furthermore, we're going to see that the gates are, are always open. Okay, nothing, there are no enemies, uh, uh, again, uh, of God or God's people. They've all been destroyed. Uh, and the, uh, the gates are there uh, to allow, to symbolize, again, free access to the city of all those who are God's. And verse 14 says, The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles. Now, <clears throat> most cities, of course, uh, in antiquity, uh, had great walls, again, for actual protection, not just symbolic uh, security, but for actual protection. And of course, the great walls required great foundations. And John is able to see the foundations. These uh, foundations were not uh, submerged under earth, but he's able to see the foundation as the city descends from heaven. And names inscribed on the city, on the foundations rather, and the, the names were the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And you have to wonder, well, was Judas one of those? I, at least I wondered that, and I don't think so. I think uh, Matthias or the uh, or Paul rather Paul might have been the twelfth apostle whose name was uh, written on the foundations and they those names represented the New Testament saints okay uh, the saints that uh, 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 that became believers uh, after the death of Christ uh, actually uh, during his earthly ministry and after his death and resurrection. And you'll notice uh, Jesus has referred to as the lamb. And when we, when he's referred to that, that way, you can't help but remember his sacrifice. sacrifice. He was a sacrificial lamb. Uh, he's also uh, the, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And of course that speaks of his, uh, uh, his coming in power. Uh, and uh, to destroy the enemies of God, which we read elsewhere in Revelation. Now, I should also say that, uh, you know, Christians have um, been taught uh, that the apostles and ancient prophets um, uh, were considered the foundation of the church with Christ the Lamb as the cornerstone. Read about that in Ephesians 2, 19 to 21. Uh, so what, again, John is, the angel is doing, actually, uh, in showing John this is he highlights God's work in salvation history, okay? Uh, the presence of both Israel and the church are emphasized 
uh, and uh, they are all uh, God's covenant people. Again, the Old Testament saints and the church, the New Testament saints, are all God's covenant people, and they will all be united in the New Jerusalem and experience God's glory. So let's move on to the second. Oh, that's, there's a question here from one of the commentaries. It says, what are the challenges in balancing the hope of spending eternity with God and living holy lives now? That's a question for you to ponder and answer. The challenges with balancing the hope, the confident expectation that we have of spending an eternity in glory with God and living holy lives now. I think it should motivate us looking at this glorious future uh, and this glorious city that we are going to be spending eternity with with God should motivate us to live more faithful and pure lives that reflect God's glory in this world and in this life okay let's move on to the second division which from the quarterly is entitled plenty good room that's covered between verses 15 and 17 from the NIV they read the angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city its gates and its walls the city was laid out like a square as long as it was wide he measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12 stadia or King James says furlongs in length and as wide and high as it is long. Verse 17, the angel measured the wall using human measurement and it was 144 cubits thick. 144 cubits thick. So let's go back to verse um, 14 now. I'm sorry. Let's go back to verse 15. And uh, it reads, And the angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The measuring rod was thought to be 8 to 10 feet long. John MacArthur says it was typically it's 10 feet long, uh, or the equivalent of that. And the fact that it was, was gold and spoke of uh, again, it's uh, uh, the the appropriateness of this royal city. It symbolized royalty, of course. Um, and he measured the city uh, with, uh, verse uh, 16 says, the city was laid for square. That means it was square uh, length and, and width equal. And it was as long as it was wide. And he also said it was as high as it was long. But he said, uh, let's read the verse again. It said, the city was laid out like a square as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000. I'm going to use furlongs. I'm not familiar with the stadia in length. And as wide as it was high. Now, 12,000 furlongs is equal to, now you get different lengths from different commentators, okay? <laughs> I've gotten 1,300 miles from one. I got 1,500 miles from, the, uh, from another and 1,400 miles from John MacArthur. And we're going to split the difference here and go with 1,400 miles. The so it's 1,400 miles wide, 1,400 miles long, and 1,400 miles high. That's an, that's an enormous cube, and it, it is 2 billion cubic miles in volume. That's an enormous city, larger than anything we could imagine. But it, uh, plenty of room for all the saints throughout the ages uh, to dwell in. Okay, that's that's what we're talking about. And again, the city is really unimaginable and undescribable. But again, the angel does the best he can to communicate it to John. And John writes as he's commanded to do in words that uh, 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 
or comprehensible in his day and hopefully for us to the extent again this glorious city can be described let's move on to verse uh, 17 and the angel measured the wall using human measurements and it was 144 cubits thick now the actual verse does not tell us whether it was height or thickness but it's assumed that it was the thickness the height uh, had to be more significant given the height of the of the city itself uh, and the um, the hundred and forty four cubits is uh, roughly seventy two yards or two hundred and and twelve feet so this is a very thick wall again supported by the foundation very sturdy bejeweled foundations um, now again this wall is not um, needed for protection again all God's enemies uh, have been uh, destroyed and cast into the lake of fire it is symbolic of the security that believers will have uh, in this city with this great wall uh, again and with angels stationed at the gates we're going to learn more about the gates uh, shortly um, so we're gonna we're gonna move now this is again uh, the, this is in, is incomparable the, the, the city itself uh, not comparable to anything on earth and uh, I've I've been blessed to have seen some some marvelous works of man uh, some of the uh, ancient wonders of the world the Colosseum and we know that there the Taj Mahal and other places are, are beautiful uh, uh, by man's standard, but this surpasses uh, anything that man could uh, could even imagine uh, in terms of its its glory and its brilliance and its beauty, and it's again uh, symbolize security that this symbolize security that it offers. Let's move into the third now division, uh, which is entitled. Oh, there's a question here. Let's read the question. And it says, how should knowledge of New the knowledge, no, it says, how should knowledge of New Jerusalem's spaciousness inform efforts to evangelize the lost? Well, hopefully you can, <laughs> you can uh, answer that by, there's plenty of room, okay? In fact, the title of the division was Plenty Good Room. There's plenty of room for all uh, who would trust in Jesus. Uh, who would become uh, believers uh, in the Lord Jesus and part of God's uh, family. Okay, uh, now we're going to move into the third division, which is entitled Incomparable Beauty, and do a deeper dive into the construction uh, materials used uh, in the city. That's covered between Revelation 21, verses 18 to 21. Again from the NIV, and it reads, The wall was made of jasper, and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. Number 19, the foundation of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, Verse 20, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the third, the eighth rather beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jason, and the twelfth amethyst. Verse 21, the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was gold, as pure as transparent glass. Now I said, <laughs> this this city is really indescribable, and some of the words used to describe it are, um, again, a bit confusing because uh, we don't understand uh, how the city can be, uh, the walls can be. Uh, jasper or diamond city can be pure gold 
uh, meaning I believe the construction within the city walls or pure gold, even the street, uh, pure gold as transparent as glass. When have we seen gold as transparent as glass? Well, let's, let's just jump into this verse by verse here. Let's back up to verse 18. And again, it reads, the wall was made of jasper, the city of pure gold as pure as glass. Now, the again, jasper was a stone that was opaque, but when John says it was pure as glass, again, it suggests that it was diamond. It was a diamond, pure, clear, and refracted uh, brilliant lights uh, as diamonds do when they're cut. Uh, and, uh, and then he goes on to say that the city was pure gold, as pure as glass. Now, there are a couple of ways that uh, you could understand this. Uh, number one is, I mean, the purity uh, was purer than any uh, earthly refiner can can produce gold or can refine gold to, uh, and so that it was as pure as as if you could look right through it. That's one way to interpret this. The other is, uh, of course, molten metals were like mirrors. They were so, uh, when they were, the metal was very pure, you could look and see yourself as if you were looking into a glass mirror. Uh, that's one way to look at it, but I think the, uh, uh, the, the the more uh, probably um, probable understanding is that this was a pure gold refined to the point of absolute purity, and that is why he says it was a light pure glass. But again, as I said, as I've been saying through, throughout the lesson here, it's undescribable. It, uh, John is using the best he can with the language he has to describe it. Uh, we don't understand how gold could be as pure as glass, but we will when we go to our future, future abode. He says the foundation of the walls uh, were, hold on one second. He says the foundation of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. And then he lists these stones, uh, the first, and, and I don't know how they were arranged, perhaps uh, layers. I, I, I imagine they were layers of stone making up the foundation. Uh, and uh, the first, again, he says was jasper, again, that's, that's a diamond. Second, sapphire, the third, agate, the fourth, emerald. Uh, and then he goes on in verse 20, he said the fifth, onyx the six rubies, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, and the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jason, and the twelfth amethyst. Now these jewels, uh, I'm, I'm not going to get into descriptions of these various jewels. Suffice it to say that they were very precious and there was some symbolic significance for each of them. Uh, we know that throughout uh, several uh, passages in the Bible, jewels are, are mentioned. Uh, eight of these 12 jewels were jewels that were uh, commanded to be placed in the breastplate of the high priest. And we can see that in Exodus uh, chapter 28, verses 17 to 20. Uh, but, what, what, and, and foundations are usually... Uh, submerged I mean in, in the earth uh, they're not seen in this case uh, we know that John sees the foundations as the city descends from heaven but I don't know that they are going to be submerged and it, it just speaks of the extravagance of God's uh, design and construction of this city uh, if something as usually un uh, uh, unrecognized, if you will, uh, as a foundation is so bejeweled, it, it is speaking of uh, the, the, the splendor, the brilliance, and the sparing of no uh, expense uh, and, uh, to uh, adorn, if you will, this city in which God would abode with his people. 
and 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 I should say uh, these uh, the names of these jewels uh, again have, they've been mentioned these stones have been mentioned throughout the Bible have been have changed over uh, the years over the centuries in which the Bible was uh, was written and so uh, you might read uh, other lists of stones uh, precious stones being used. Uh, that differ because the names have changed, but they're actually the same. But again, uh, I think the overall takeaway is uh, that God uh, is uh, being uh, extravagant in the, 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 the beauty, the magnificence of uh, this city, including uh, the construction materials. So finally, verse 21, it reads, the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. Now, uh, we know <laughs> pearls are made from oysters and actually formed uh, by an irritant, a grain of sand that gets into an oyster and, and really causes it tremendous pain. And ex, ex, uh, um, we know that excretions uh, from the pearl to comfort it, uh, clam rather, uh, coat this grain of sand. And, and over time, uh, excruciating times of pain, this pearl is formed. Uh, the symbology may be that the pearls represents the suffering of Christ uh, that gained us entrance through the gates into this glorious city. Uh, and the pearls are, of course, enormous, uh, obviously unimaginable, uh, considering our understanding, our earthly understanding of pearls and how they are formed. But again, uh, as I said, undescribable, uh, un incomparable to anything. And at the, at the time, uh, uh, John wrote uh, revelations the pearl was extremely precious and valuable again because of uh, it, its rarity and, and how uh, uh, the, 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 the the difficulty in forming the pearls again um, so it, it speaks of the preciousness the, uh, of, of the entries I mean how God regards uh, the entry into his abode, into his presence, uh, and he is sparing no expense as if, <laughs> as if God had uh, any expense to be concerned about. But you understand what I'm saying. He is just being elaborate uh, in uh, this construction, the construction of the new Jerusalem. And, and then he, uh, he finally says in part B of 21, in the street, of the city was pure gold uh, and it was trans as transparent as glass again uh, he said the city was gold and I have to believe that maybe the the buildings within the city were gold and uh, as pure as again transparent glass if we can imagine that uh, also um, he said it just said street singular and not streets well the main street uh, was uh, gold and uh, there were probably side streets as well but he just mentions uh, perhaps a main street uh, that is uh, pure gold as transparent as glass and uh, we, we read in Revelation 22 that uh, the uh, 22 uh, verse 1 how the that the trees that are good for the healing that, that uh, would be on either side of the street, uh, the tree of life, if you will. Uh, he talks about the uh, uh, water flowing from the throne uh, down uh, this street. Uh, and, uh, and, and this, uh, and this uh, one of the commentators says that God displays beauty for his people but more importantly, God will bring new life. Ultimately, he will restore his creation for his glory. So our takeaway from uh, this lesson, again, which really gives us uh, as probably as thorough a description 
as John could could give us using the language he had uh, available to him. I believe again, uh, the beauty uh, is indescribable. Was indescribable uh, is to let us know uh, the what it awaits us again uh, as we enter into the very presence of God for e for eternity for our eternal future, uh, and it ought to motivate us uh, to be again more faithful to God in this life to reflect his glory in this life. And what do I mean by reflecting his glory? Uh, do and speak in such a way that God is seen in us, that Christ is seen in us, his light, uh, his truth, uh, his grace, uh, his mercy is seen in us. God commands us to be all those things, merciful and gracious because he is, and we are to reflect his glory in this world. So we pray that um, uh, you have uh, been blessed by this message as I have, again, as it is a reminder of what awaits us, uh, the glory and the uh, indescribable beauty and security that awaits us. And, and, and uh, so we, we would like to just close in a word of prayer until such time as we meet again. Father, we do thank and praise you again for this glimpse of the indescribable uh, beauty and security that we will experience through all eternity with you. Lord, let it serve as a motivator for us, Lord, to live more faithfully before you, to do those things that are pleasing in your sight, Lord, to allow Christ to be seen in our lives, Lord, in our, be heard in our speech. Uh, and Lord, help us to, uh, uh, to reflect you in this sin-sick and dying world, Lord. And, and again, in ways that are pleasing in your sight, we pray for all those uh, who have heard this lesson. We pray for each family, each household. We pray for every church, Lord, that will be opened uh, in your name on the Lord's day, Lord. Uh, we pray that your word would uh, be spoken with clarity, with authority, with power, Lord, and that it would penetrate good soil in our hearts and produce much precious and abiding fruit that will redound to your praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.